Coming to you live from PRS View Studios, this is your Plastic Surgery Minute. I'm Dr. Heather Furness, and this is Dr. Joseph Hadid. Joe, can you tell me what are the surgical options for someone looking at gender reassignment surgery? Certainly, that's a great question. So there's a lot of surgical options available for someone that's considering undergoing gender reassignment. And um, it's important to recognize that it's not a one-size-fits-all approach. It's helpful to think of these procedures as addressing the face, chest, body, and genitalia. Um, it's important to remember that each surgical plan has to be customized to address the individual goals and desires of each patient. On the face, for example, we have options that can either lengthen or shorten the forehead, either reduce or augment the ridge above the brow. We can change the shape of the nose to make it look more masculine or feminine. We can augment the cheeks. We can shorten the upper lip. We can add volume to the lip. We can recontour the chin. We can either reduce or widen the jaw to look, change the appearance of the lower part of the face. And then we could actually even reduce or augment the Adam's apple area. Moving on down for the chest, we can either do a mastectomy to remove breast tissue or do a breast augmentation to add more breast volume. Typically for the body, liposuction and or fat transfer to recontour the waist, hips and buttocks area. And then finally for the genitalia, we actually have the ability to change the outer appearance of the external genitalia such that it matches the person's gender identity. There are a lot of options. Certainly. So what are the requirements for undergoing gender reassignment? So great question. So the World Professional Association for Transgender Health has issued standards of care that are helped to guide clinical decision makers to assist um, transgender or gender nonconforming individuals to maximize their overall health, psychological well-being, as well as their sense of self-fulfillment. Now, the standards of care as it relates to surgery includes that the patient has to have a persistent, well-documented uh, gender dysphoria. They have to have the capability to make a fully informed decision and to consent for surgery. They have to be of the age of majority and the country in which they live. And then finally, if they have any pre-existing medical or mental health conditions, these have to be reasonably controlled at the time of surgery. Now for chest or top surgery, the patient also has to provide one letter of recommendation from a qualified mental health professional. And then for bottom or genital surgery, they have to provide two letters of recommendation. This is very helpful. Thanks so much, Joe. My pleasure.